Welcome back. I'm sure you're wondering, um, <clears throat> I, I thought you said an actor, she's supposed to be acting. Well, that's why they're called the creatives. They have a range, literally. They could do a lot of things. They can even be in broadcasting, some of them. So it's a range of talent for the people in this industry. And we have joining us right now. You see on your screen, she's singing. I'm sure you were wondering, she should be acting. Yes. She wears all of that cap. Jennifer Iliogo joins us <laughs> right here on The Morning Brief. Thank you so much for coming and welcome. Thank you for having me. And so, you look amazing, by the thank way. Thank you. Oh, I like that. <laughs> you know, I tried to do the explanation on your behalf. Okay. But since you're here, you do that explanation. On your behalf. On, on your own behalf. <laughs> <laughs> we're seeing you on the screens yes. acting. That's what we're familiar with. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing you singing. So maybe a little explanation for some press release. <laughs> well, I sing as well. <laughs> Years after acting, I went back to my first love. I started singing full time. I didn't leave acting anyway. Because yeah. it's usually the other way around. Uh, for some people, they start singing mm. and, and then, then they, they, go, they into go into acting, acting and then they just coast on. But for you, it's different for you are holding both industries. Literally. Seriously, I'm holding it down. Seriously. <laughs> yes. Now, now that song, for, for people who don't speak the language, mm -hmm. apparently it's become a hit. And, and I think the, the, um, what the, the lyrics actually resonates a lot. So maybe lot talk us people. through uh, what you were trying to portray and pass across with that uh, song. That song is titled Onolubi. Onolubi one now one also simply means uh, I'll, I'll in a layman's language, mm. he that hears the cry of a brethren, help out. Mm. It's just a cry for togetherness, for people to come back together, for forgiveness, for unity, trust, brotherhood. I think we have lost our humanity in recent times, you'll agree with me. The kinds of things you hear and see on the social media street is, is sometimes is mind blowing. And I don't know, I've done music 10 years before I did Onolubi. And it's, it's not my usual genre, but it came. It's like a message, and I was restless about it, reading those things, seeing, watching videos, kidnappings, killings, stories that never used to be. They have become like a norm. And I felt like, okay, so what can I do to help? Uh, Use my voice. <laughs> and, and truthfully, um, I'm grateful that I did this. I'm grateful to God for that gift, that using me as a vessel, because the Igbo community at home and in diaspora, you don't want to know how much they have embraced the song. You see families making up, you see groups making up, you see siblings making up, and they reach out to me to say, thank you, I listened to your song, and I made up with my brother, I made up with my sister. That alone for me, it just makes me grateful to God that he was able to use me or I made myself available to be used, you know. So, yes, and then we're moving on. Beautiful. Beautiful. And so whether it's on Nolube or any other song mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, I've heard you sing, mm -hmm. I, I see that preference for your language, which is beautiful, yes. by the way. Yes. Um, it, it's suggestive of going into delving into Igbo folklore mm -hmm. proper. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk to us about that, you know. Uh, what are those influences? Did they start as a child for you that makes you, uh, that makes it resonate with you, that particular Igbo genre? Igbo language. Yeah. Well, um, it, it does. I grew up in Lagos, but I grew up with a very a typical Igbo man as a father, a titled man. So we spoke Igbo in the house. In fact, we do primary school in Lagos and then we go to my hometown to do secondary school. I did secondary school in my hometown in the village. And I remember my schoolmates would call me Subo Igbo. Subo Igbo means speak English. Right. <laughs> because they thought I spoke a lot of English. I mean, I grew up in Lagos, Lagos and then you come to school in the village. Everything around me, the songs, the kind of music my father played growing up, he played a lot of high life, you know, music. And I think it's, and my, my mom was a lover girl, so she did a lot of uh, love songs, <laughs> you know. Oh, well, she was into music as well. Sorry? She was into music. No, 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 but she just loved music. Oh, she I loves see. to sing. She sings better than myself, actually. Mm. Yes, okay. she does. So it, um, excuse me, it influenced me a lot. And then growing up, 
you know, we had a lot of values back then. The things you don't say, the things you don't do. The kind of songs I do, I do lo a lot of love songs. Love for God, love for self, you don't give what you don't have, and love for humanity. You know, so you find that I do a little bit of this and that. I do inspirational songs, I do lovers rock reggae, I do ballads and then high life, oh, that's, that's my forte. So yes, it has influenced me and I love my language. I'm unapologetically <laughs> Igbo. Tell and that. I love to sing yeah. in my dialect. Yes. Yeah, preach it, ma'am. <laughs> yes. So let, let's go back to where we knew you from, for yes. some of us, which yes. is acting. <laughs> and um, talk to us about how you are, because at, at, at your level, at some point, you will begin to choose roles you want to play. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't just pick anything. Because now you're beginning to see your position in the industry that it has to be about something. So as it stands now, if people come up to you and you want to evaluate the industry, what are the kinds of script you are expecting people to bring to you that you will gladly jump on, just like you jump on the music? Yeah, I would naturally tell to us stories that teach values, morals. You know, doesn't mean one is a very good pressing but you know you feel the urge a lot of people look up to me especially the younger ones they always say to as i get those messages i get to talk to them i happen to do public speaking especially for the youth so i hear them talk and when i talk they listen luckily for me so i'm thinking if people look up to you to to whom much is giving you know so i always would want to do a future in films that portray Somebody has to play the bad guy anyway. Mm. And if I need to play that, I will. If it's very relevant to the story, and at the end of the day, there's a moral, there's a value to be learnt, then that's fine with me. But I wouldn't go out of my way to be part of any movie just because of the money. Well, that's very important. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> that's very important, but first it's the story. First, the story. Who am I working with? What is this about? What am I bringing to the table? What value would this character add to the story and to the audience who are going to watch? So yes, I, I actually do take my time, read the script, and be sure that this is what I want to be part of, and this is how it's going to affect the audience at the end of the day, because it's all about the consumers. What are you, what are you passing along? It's important. I, I notice a thread in, in your responses. Uh, so you have a different worldview. I don't know if it's come as a result of experience, age, so you're big on uh, you know, culture, ethics, what will bring mm -hmm. us together, yes. preaching the right kind of mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, message. So it's not just about you know, fashion, do anything to trend. No. You know, that's what it is now no, these days. Uh, me, people no. just want to be in the news for different reasons, and you go, do you know that young people are watching you? Exactly. Why would you put this out there? Why would you say exactly. this? And it's, it was good to hear you mention social media because that's like the reality for a lot of people. I know. This world is the second world. Social media is the reality. That's people spend it. more time on their mobile devices. And I'm sure you've seen how a lot of young people carry about uh, with the ethnic divide. You can almost predict that every other day there's a battle. Sad, uh, is it Igbo Yoruba? Is it Hausa Igbo Hausa Yoruba? And you're wondering, there are bigger fish to fry. And this has separated problems. us, divided us for too long. Exactly. So a lot of young people look up to you. And you said yes. they listen to you, thankfully. So I imagine they're listening right now. I'm sure. <laughs> what, what do you tell them uh, by virtue of your experience? Mm -hmm. When all of this, I am Igbo, I am Yoruba, I am Hausa, you people are this, you people are that. Mm -hmm. When it comes up, how do you want young people to approach it? I, I think it's just, it's systemic. Some set of people somewhere are trying so hard to keep us apart. Because if we come together, things will begin to work against them and better for us. And they don't want that. So they put it in your head all the time. You're Igbo. Igbo people like money. They do this, they do that. He's Yoruba. Oh, they are very uh, cunning. They are sellouts. Oh, the houses. They're growing up on my street. We had friends who were Yorubas. My father's house was here. Uh, the opposite my house was a house of family. The next compound we had, Rivers. Wow. And we all, yes, I never really, we didn't go out a lot. 
But because our parents knew each other, so if your child is going to be friends with anybody, you know their parents. You know what kind of family they're from. But where they're from was not, uh, it was nothing. It didn't matter. So now that someone has to say, oh, you're evil, like someone once told me, I can't date an evil girl. I said, oh, too bad. You're, you're lost. lost. <laughs> <laughs> you're lost. Because there are good people everywhere and there are bad people everywhere. Mm. So every opportunity I get, most times I think about it. <laughs> well, yeah, I think about the things I feel. I have a song titled, I don't even know what it's titled, Love One Another. It's a reggae song. And I speak my mind all the time. I have a song titled Peace. Peace in Nigeria, peace in Africa, peace to, if you love me and I love you, if we love each other, the world would be a better place. So it's, it's, I don't know how to go around telling everyone, but I can think about it. It makes it easier. So when I'm saying love one another today, tomorrow might be too late to say I'm sorry, you will listen. Mm. If nothing else, okay, what is she this thing? And then you're caught and then you listen to the lyrics. You must go home with something. So what I do is I think about it. When I thought about young girls and the way we objectify ourselves, this, this sexualize ourselves, it's, it's, it's sickening for me. There are women who, she's doing a great job, I watch you. So why can't the Thank young you. girls, yes, why can't the young girls aspire to be like you, to be like Chima Amanda? To be like, do you understand? Why does it have always have to be about the frivolities before necessities? I thought about it. There are young girls out there doing well and nobody's commending them. I did a song recently titled Asa. Asa is a slang for a beautiful woman. Mm. But this, in this situation, this is a beautiful woman who has brains. She's intelligent. She's well behaved. She has a job. She makes her own money. And then she's useful to her spouse in the other room. Hallelujah. So she's a complete woman. So I, when I'm singing to young girls, some of them will do videos and send to me. If you send me a video where you're half nude and you're singing, I'm not going to repost it. Because I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> I'm talking about that young girl Ouch. who has her head screwed onto... You know what I mean? Yes, that's how I can send this message. I can't go around telling them, oh, you don't have to do that. I mean, youthful exuberance sometimes plays a role. Mm -hmm. sure. When I was younger, I was married already. There was one dress I wore, very scandalous. That was the first and the last I wore that, the kind of, <laughs> yes. I was feeling very cool. I, 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 God I, took exceptions. The, no, not even him. The, the public. Ah, oh, Jennifer, this is not you. Where did it happen? Who sent you? Well, naturally, you show off a little bit of skiing, but what is now excessive? Now, me, I advise myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the, I, there was a day my daughter saw it. I have an 18-year-old now. Then she was about 10. She said, Mom, what were you thinking? I said, I'm asking myself. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm asking myself. I don't know women. So if you have to be a role model to young people, you can't, you can't do half measures. You go all the way. Doesn't mm. mean you don't dress well. Doesn't mean you don't live a normal life. But there's got to be a, a boundary. There's got to be so, a line. You draw a line. You know when not to cross that line because those watching you, looking up to you, think that everything you do is correct. You know, so, so I, I couldn't agree more with you that you, music is a universal language. Exactly. But so is movie because yes, it's, it, is. You know, uh, it speaks a lot, a uh, strong mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. So I want you to take us down memory lane. Yeah. You're certainly not a greenhorn in no, the no. movie industry. <laughs> I used to watch you back then. Way back. Uh, uh, tell us about some of the most profound um, roles that you have that played. played. Uh, yesterday we were talking about, um, you know, the curating of the work of Nollywood from mm -hmm. way back in time. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if you have, I'm sure you have strong views about that as well. So react to those two issues. Um, our stories have evolved way back. It used to be, um, our stories used to tell and teach morals. So for every action, you, at the end of the day, there's a repercussion. But you see, we, how do I put this <laughs> so that it's mild and still, you know, say what I want to say? Sometimes we overdo it. We mm -hmm. over-exaggerate, if there's any word like that. We, we blow things out of proportion. And then we spend so much time ob objectifying the negatives and then spend very little time showing what repercussion can, can come when you do this. I have a problem with that. 
you give them equal parts because truthfully, karma knows our addresses. Sometimes it comes slow, but some it comes. Then other times it happens almost immediately. You know, so I'm always for that. If you're going to tell the story and tell us how, don't, don't beautify the negative so much. And then at the end of the day, towards the end, the person just, after probably killing 20 people, mm -hmm. they just confess and die. I don't want it to happen like that. I don't want it. I want people to understand that for every action, there's a repercussion. So I, I would tell such stories. I write, I like to write. I like to write for myself. <laughs> I haven't written for anyone before myself. I produced five of my own films. Beautiful. I just, not because um, it's a competition. No, I'm on a mission. If I have to change anything, if I have to get your attention, I want to tell my story from my angle and get a few people to see it and understand so, where I'm coming from. So there are layers of questions, but yes, let's speak to what we're seeing on the screen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> can you, uh, you interpret what's going on here. Okay, you are so Mama G. Remember, she's my mother-in-law in this mm. film. I'm a medical doctor, doing very well, have my own practice, and I'm married to her son, who is a graduate. I think he's lazy. He's mm. not working. I provide. I do everything. So he stays at home and takes care of the home. And she hates me for that. Should I be blamed for that, really? If the boy really wanted to do something, he would get a job. But that's, then that's all he does, he comes to say, I need 500,000. And I give him. I like the fact that, in the film, uh. I like the fact that, <laughs> I like the fact that he stays at home and takes care of, he cooks, he cleans, he washes, and the mom is losing it. She thinks I have used juju on him, which actually is not the case. The boy is just lazy. But he also has plans. He has a not... You don't want to give out too much. I don't want to give out too much. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is, is a series. It's yeah. titled a House Husband. Right. Beautiful uh, one, yes. So is it By showing Rock. now? It's showing, yes. Okay, I think we're in season three or four. Oh, beautiful. Mm. Uh, it has up to, at, at the moment, it has up to like seven. That's, that's like turning African culture on his head. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. But it's, I don't think it's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, do you the think jury's it, out there. Do you think do it's you her think fault? It's my fault? He's not, he doesn't so, want to do anything. It's, right. all, it's already there. Yeah. Yes. As in, in the society, we can, we can point to one or two situations where yes. we have house husbands and the woman is the one. Um, catering to the families, the breadwinner, so to speak. And she doesn't really lord it over him, you know. But the mother doesn't like the fact, I mean, any mother wouldn't like that. Uh, but right. it's not me, it's him. Yeah, be, be, so the story must be told. Yeah. What, what is she up to? We, what are you up to next? More moment. music? More? Yes, more, oh, definitely. I'm, I'm, what, I have a, my first album is out there, it's titled Beautiful. It's on platforms. And I'm working on another <coughs> album. Beautiful. But I'm going to do like two, three singles, and then I do the full album. Love one another today, tomorrow it might be. Yes, <coughs> tomorrow it might be. Can you sing that part? I <laughs> Love one another today. Tomorrow might be too late to say I'm sorry. Love one another today. Let there be love. Let there be love. Follow me, sing, say. Love, love one, one another, another today. today. <laughs> Tomorrow oh. might be too late to say I'm sorry. Beautiful. I love one another I'm glad today. to get the lyrics. Let there be love. Wow. wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Lady you. of songs and action. Right, Thank right. you so much. Amazing, amazing right. work. Thank you so much for coming Thank on the program. So Jennifer right. Liogo, actor, producer, <clears throat> apologies, singer, songwriter, and performing artist. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank we appreciate you. So much. you. Thank well, you for having me. Anytime you're doing more projects, we're out here to support you. Thank you. That's good to know. <laughs> All right. So when we come back after this break, we'll bring you, uh, well, we're going to Sweet Gears there to Abidjan, where we'll talk about the super ghosts of Nigeria. Join us again. Mm -hmm.